So for those of you out there who still can't tell from my copious amounts of regional references and tendency to slip into colloquial cultural aphorisms like a greased up catfish in a barrel of something racist, or alternatively if you just haven't seen my review of Deepwater Horizon, I am from what is ever more nebulously referred to as the South, the so-called heart of Dixie, the land where the men are men and the animals fear for their lives. The curious thing about the South, outside of where on earth did all these alligators and horrible people come from, is that you don't really see movies made about it very often, at least ones in which more than more of the character's stereotypical southernness, which let's face it, is only mostly untrue, is neither exaggerated for comic relief nor exaggerated for the sake of unambiguous villainy or if there just happens to be a natural disaster worth capitalizing on. And that's what makes Logan Lucky so interesting, even if it hadn't been rendered inherently noteworthy by virtue of its production alone. Build is not only a return of veteran director Steven Soderbergh to his old heist film stomping ground, but also a so-called resurgence of mid-budget blockbuster fare, which doesn't really seem to be panning out, but oh well. Logan Lucky concerns two working-class brothers from West Virginia who stage an elaborate robbery of the Charlotte Motor Speedway during one of the biggest NASCAR races of the year. Because if there's anything that we Southerners concern ourselves more with than connect a sausage, college football, church on Sunday, and casual racism, it's auto sports and not wanting to pay for things. Now, Steven Soderbergh isn't exactly known as the most thematically deep and visually arresting director, but when it comes to having a good time, he delivers. And even at its most superficial, Logan Lucky is nothing if not a hell of a lot of fun. It's smartly written, fluidly paced, and the jokes fire off in short, consistent bursts, so the humor has enough variety that it never becomes exhausting or overwhelming. The performances from the two leads were pretty great, Adam Driver especially as a stressed out Iraq war veteran. As you can probably tell from the trailers, Daniel Craig's performance was a little iffy, but it was clear that he was having fun playing against type and he communicated this attitude to the audience very effectively. The supporting cast was more of a mixed bag. Most of them ranged from fine to good, but Hilary Swank seemed like she had just wandered off the set of a Jason Bourne movie and it was incredibly distracting how overtly serious her performance was. And Seth MacFarlane? That man is simply a crime against comedy. Seriously, the actual natural NASCAR drivers in cameo roles gave more believable performances than him. The reason I brought up the relevance of the Southern, for lack of a better word, depiction in the popular culture, it's because Logan Lucky seems to have this kind of twisted current events think piece horseshit working simultaneously against it and for it. On the one hand, yes, flawed but sympathetic characters in this demographic are rather hard to come by, but taking the piss out of itself is no small part of Logan Lucky's repertoire, as if to explicitly undermine all of these hypothetical false positives. And that's definitely not a bad thing. Being able to not take itself seriously is certainly an advantage given that the movie is kind of a joke in and of itself. Unfortunately, Logan Lucky would have to elevate itself above the trappings of just another well-made heist movie to warrant so lofty a discussion, and I don't really think it does. Outside of the setting and Adam Driver's character, the remaining parts that make up Logan Lucky's whole are rather formulaic. Conflicting motivations from the Bang Brothers, a cliched B story involving Channing Tatum's daughter, and a painfully underdeveloped romance between Channing Tatum and Catherine Waterston's character left this movie struggling to kill time in between the actual heist scenes. And you know, I appreciate the effort that clearly went into trying to have me take a scene featuring child beauty pageants seriously. For what that scene was, it almost kind of worked, but it was so played out that I wouldn't even have had the time to list the movies I've seen with literally the exact same scene before this one was over. Perhaps most unfortunately, Logan Lucky is saddled with one of those movie plans. You know the ones I mean, the kind of scheme where the success or failure of the entire operation depends on accurately predicting the exact reactions of multiple different parties who aren't even remotely involved in the actual heist. I could have handled a little absurdity, especially given the tone of the film, but eventually the plan becomes so needlessly complicated that it actually starts running out of time to appropriately establish these devices and basically just hides them from the audience until a revelatory montage near the very end. But like I said, Logan Lucky is fun, and it doesn't necessarily fall apart if you start thinking about it, but it does start to wobble a little bit. It's basically the movie equivalent of a candy bar. It's sweet, tasty, lightweight, and ultimately kind of disposable. You can live without it, but it's definitely not a waste of time by any means.